Hello and welcome to this capsule course on vehicle dynamics and control. Both the longitudinal and lateral vehicle dynamics and control are covered in this course. I am Subhash and I am the instructor of this course. I was a developer of vehicle dynamics control functions in Continental and as a part of my job I have given numerous trainings for my colleagues on several vehicle dynamics topics. I have worked in the vehicle dynamics industry for more than 11 years. I really enjoy learning and teaching vehicle dynamics and control. This course is designed based on my work experience at Continental as a developer of vehicle dynamics control functions and also from my experience in training my colleagues on vehicle dynamics topics. From these experiences, I understood what all concepts automotive engineers actually need to know about vehicle dynamics to contribute to their company effectively, thus contributing to the automotive industry itself. And I have designed this course to share the knowledge, experience and thoughts with the wider automotive community. So the primary target audience of this course is the practicing automotive engineers who deals with the vehicle dynamics in some way in their job. And this course is also equally useful for aspiring automotive engineers who want to start their career in vehicle dynamics or vehicle dynamics control. The major objective of this course is to convey the physical meaning of the important vehicle dynamics and control concepts with animations and visualizations for a clear understanding. Now, what are the major highlights of this course? To understand vehicle dynamics control in a systematic manner, several thought-provoking fundamental questions are asked and answered to get more insights into the core idea. And the fundamental concepts of vehicle dynamics are covered in an intuitive way. Now let's quickly glance through the course contents. First we will look into a more formal understanding of vehicle dynamics and vehicle dynamics control. Then we will look into a basic vehicle geometry. And then we will see the external forces acting on the vehicle both in vertical and longitudinal directions. And then in lateral and vertical directions. And there is a short mechanics recap session in that first we will see the classification of mechanics then Newton's second law, then we will see de Alembert principle, then we will see the concept of center of rotation and instantaneous center, then we will look into moment of force and moment of couple, and a possible situation where the moment of a force and moment of a couple acts on a vehicle, and then we will look into the right handed coordinate system and how it is placed in a vehicle. And then we will have a detailed look on the vehicle coordinate system and degrees of freedom of the vehicle. We will look into the static reaction forces on a vehicle. Then we will see the dynamic load transfer due to acceleration and braking. And then we see the dynamic load transfer due to cornering. And we will look into more details of pitch motion, roll motion and yaw motion. And then we will see the concept of slip ratio or slip and the braking force coefficient and traction force coefficient. And a detailed explanation is done on the mu slip curve we see here. And to get a deeper insight into the mu slip curve, an experiment facility is explained which could estimate the mu slip curve. Then we will have a closer look on braking force and traction force on a tire. Then we will see the rolling resistance due to tire material and then we will see one of the most important parameters, dynamic rolling radius or effective radius. Then we will see the tire slip angle or slip angle. Then we will look into cornering stiffness and lateral force. And we will also see friction circle or friction ellipse. And then we will see the combined longitudinal and lateral forces. Then we will look into Ackermann steering condition and the general orientation of a vehicle. And then bicycle model or single track model both kinetic bicycle model and kinematic bicycle model. And before going to vehicle dynamics control part, we will see what happens to the direction stability of the vehicle if the front wheels are locked. When a disturbance yaw moment acts, how the vehicle is going to behave. We will see that in detail with animations. And similarly, what happens to steerability if it is left turn or right turn and what happens to the directional stability if the rear wheels lock for high mu 
and for loamy surface. We will see how the vehicle would react when a disturbance yaw moment acts. Then we will also look into the steerability when the rear wheels are locked. Both the left turn and right turn. Do understeer vehicles always exhibit the same behavior? Why? Questions like this are addressed and different possibilities are explained in detail. And why vehicle dynamics control is required? Different use cases are considered to show that why vehicle dynamics control is required for certain situations. And how ABS control works is explained from a function point of view and not restricted the explanation just to valves and hydraulic circuits. And how TCS control works is also explained from function point of view. And also the geometrical interpretation of fixed slip ratio is explained. This concept is particularly useful for benchmarking ABS and TCS performance studies. How the oversteer and understeer control works is explained with intuitive animations. And how the rollover control works is explained in detail. And how the torque vectoring works is explained with the concept of ideal torque vectoring. So again, welcome to this course and I'm sure you will thoroughly enjoy this course.